Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Sharon Spurlock, the Senior Director of Family Education at the St. Louis ARC, and I'm delighted that you're here to join us for our weekly family support Q&A. Um, I'm going to just turn things over to uh, one of our former interns at the ARC, Michael Gentry. I'm very excited that he's here today to share his transition journey. Hi, Michael. So once again, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, thanks to St. Louis ARC for allowing me to present in this Q&A session in fashion. So today my PowerPoint presentation is focused on my trans transition from school to a full-time job. My goal is to give you useful tips for, for this time in your life. My mother is attending and will be adding additional comments along the way. So let me start off by introducing myself. And so you know my name. Today I am employed full time in a competitive integrated work site. Because of this, I have choices. I am empowered. I live independently. I am married to my beautiful, amazing wife, Emma, and we have a five and a half pound chihuahua named Suzu. Today, I will share my personal experiences along with the information I learned from the Partners in Policy Making Program for you to use on your journey. So first, I want to cover a critical piece of legislation that, that provides important rights. So if you go back to 2004, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act states that to ensure that all children with disabilities have available to them a free and appropriate public education that emphasizes special education and related services designed to meet their unique needs and prepare them for further education, prepare them for employment, and prepare them for independent living. So my journey in high school before high school, I was diagnosed with learning disabilities, several learning disabilities and cerebral palsy at age 15. In high school, I was a B student and benefited from the special school district resource room sports. But there were different challenges, albeit academically, socially, and emotionally. My IEPs only had academic goals written into them. But didn't have any job or independent living goals. Although I had attended my IEP meetings, I was not actively writing goals for myself. My family and I really didn't understand how we needed to be more engaged in the transition planning process with a special school district. The transition tools that students have today were not widely used when I was in high school. I don't know if they were even known at that point. So, Further or going on late in my teenage year, I was connected to vocational rehabilitation. I wasn't sure what what I wanted for a job or what I would be good at, but because I had I had done cadet teaching earlier in high school, I thought I wanted to become a teacher and wrote that as my job goal in my IPE or individualized plan for employment. I took a career assessment test, which did suggest 
any practical, practical jobs for my bellies, but it did suggest that being a teacher wasn't the best fit for me. I did not engage in pre-ads pre-employment transition services through VR. Honestly, I don't recall this being offered to me then. So my journey after high, after high school, the lack of good fit job opportunities after high school led me to attend college. Luckily, I was prepared to take this step. I went to Pompeii University and graduated with a Bachelor's of Social Work. After I graduated, the available social work jobs were primarily in rural areas or direct care roles, which did not work well with my strengths. I knew I didn't want to go back and get a master's degree. So I went back to Vera for more assessments, trainings, and applying for jobs. After almost two years of searching, I was frustrated and scared. I even considered working in a shelter workshop. A so a shelter workshop for those who do not know typically doesn't pay minimum wage and is in a segregated setting away from people from other people. But then my employment specialist finally became aware of my current job at service source. So for you, my transition plan tips for you for you all. Um, create a vision of yourself as early as possible. Know yourself, your unique abilities, your opinions, qualities, and preferences. Practice self-determination by writing IEP goals that start with I will and are employment focused. Begin working with VR at age 16. Use Missouri Connections seen here and create an individualized career academic plan, also known as an ICAP. Have a thorough age targeted assessment. Ask your VR counselor to use the transition assessment toolkit seen on the right on this slide. Ask your parents to help you explore jobs in your area. Learn how to use public transportation and other transportation sports. Don't rely on your IP team to guide you. You and your parents need to be very active in the IEP transition process. Make sure your parents are very involved in developing a detailed plan in Form C, also known as a transition plan. And also understand vocational rehabilitation's role in detail by using the raise guide also seen here on your left on your right. Transition the transition plans should answer a couple of key big questions such as what are my strengths? Where do I want to live? Who? can support my goals after graduation. Graduation. What do I need to improve upon? Who is in my circle of support? What are my interests? Do I need to go to college? And how can I manage my health after graduation?
So this slide gives examples of a well-crafted of well-crafted transition goals. I'll let you read through these. More transition planning tips I can pass on to you. Use your pre employment transition services free ads to your VR counselor. counselor. For example, the Summer Skills program through PickWard or the Summer Work Experience through various VR agencies. Follow the vocational rehabilitation school to work checklist provided here. Working and volunteering while you are still in school. People who, who work in high school are two and a half times more likely to get a job after graduating. So, when starting to work with VR, don't let your IPE or individualized plan for employment limit your search. So, for example, I selected a teacher, but I had no idea about customer service administration or digital services, all of which I use on a daily basis on a daily basis at my job today. Assessments should include real world situations, including job shadowing and job tryouts. So <clears throat> I've been provided Missouri DB 101 using this website. This online tool proves that working is the best financial outcome for everybody, no matter your status or your work, your journey in life. Before I turn the focus on to on me and my current employment situation, does anybody have any questions? Oh my goodness, I have lots of questions, but I'm going to pull up. Um, you said a couple of things that were just so important. I want to emphasize the idea of experiencing work while you're in high school. I think a lot of families automatically say we're going to go for an extended school year, or it's really important for us to have a family vacation. But I think you've got to think through what your long term goals are and look at those summer opportunities because. We really are rich now in different programs that meet those needs. And some of them are very rigid about time commitments and others aren't. And you can also do it as just a free agent, get a summer job where you know you wanna take a, a couple of weeks off. Um, I, uh, I think it can be hard for students to feel like they're empowered to speak up at their IEP and create goals. How would you approach that if you were a high school student? Well, like I said before, know yourself, you know, um, advocate for yourself, um, know your pers personality, your strengths, your weaknesses. As I know, everybody has strengths and everybody has weaknesses. You may not know, know them all because you're so, so focused on yourself. So ask others to on what their perspective of you is and when they think of what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses are. Linda, do you have anything to add on that? No, but I think I would just say, in addition to what the student can do, a parent might be able to encourage their child more um, to come in and feel safe in that environment and maybe practice outside of the IEP meeting, writing goals, or how would you speak in an IEP meeting to help that student feel just a little bit more empowered when they get in there? 
Those are great answers. And um, just a reminder to all of our folks listening that charting the life course tools are free and available to all of you. And they're a great kind of starting place for planning. You also got some uh, shout outs for the I will statements that that was really a, a nice thing for people to think about that, that they could frame things in that way that was really empowering to say, I'll take responsibility for this. Um, I'm going to let you go on. I just want to say that I, I want to um, reiterate what you said about IPE goals, because I've sat in those transition planning meetings, and it's not enough to say you want to work full time in a field of your interest and explore things. They want you to say, I want to be a teacher. I want to be a construction worker. Um, and, and even though you're identifying that because that's the rule um, with the transition plan. It doesn't mean you're all the skills you're learning while you're still in school should be applicable to a wide range of jobs. So thanks for pointing out that it's still an exploratory time. Right, it is. And you you and sometimes you have to have one, if not two or three things you're focusing on or keyed on keyed in on. So like maybe you you want to become a teacher as your first um main goal. Well, maybe your second, second main goal could be a clerical assistant, or maybe your third or second goal could be um being a uh, maintenance worker. I have no idea, but. Yeah. I think you got my draft there. Absolutely. <clears throat> And I think that's something that's just changed over time. You know, the average adult has at least seven careers and jobs over their lifetime. So you want to be building big skills. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. So moving on. Uh, <clears throat> now I want to turn the focus on to my current employment by starting with, with an important concept. So back in 2014, I know it seems like a long time ago, but back in 2014, the Workforce Innovation Opportunities Act to find competitive and degree employment, or CIE, as full-time or part-time work where a person is compensated at or above minimum wage, uh, they receive the same level, level of level of benefits as a person without disabilities. They work at a location where the employee interacts with other people without disabilities, and they are presented with opportunities for advancement similar to other, other employees with without disabilities in similar positions. So how do, how is this relevant to me? Well, let me explain. I've been employed full time for eight years as a contractor, contractor with Service Source Inc. at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Here it has here is how my jobs have been customized for me. So my first couple of jobs, being a groundkeeper and recycling laborer, were, were not a good fit for me because of my gross and fine motor skills. My next job was as a service order and dispatcher. So that is like people would call or email with voting maintenance needs. I'll put them into the database or the system. So the total, total process was broken down into phases. We completed one phase and other people on my team did other phases. This way, my team and I caught each other's errors. And so my current job involves operating high-speed scanning equipment and managing digital files. 
Sometimes my motor skills make machine operation difficult, so I have backup maintenance support if needed. And our team is cross-trained to check each other's work. So, <clears throat> my employment support su supports my self-advocacy work on employment. So, I traveled to Washington, D.C. in 2022 with other self-advocates to meet with the congressional staff to advocate for jobs for people with disabilities. I will get, I will go again on, with that same comments in September of this year. I have participated in two Missouri Disability Legislative Rights Days. While I have had personal meetings with over 12 senators representatives and, legisl and legislative staffers advocating for a house in Senate bills, such as the Employment First Bill and Missouri as a model employer, both which passed last year. And I am currently enrolled in the Partisan Policy Making Program through Missouri Developmental Disabilities Council. This program trains advocates to create meaningful change. So there are six key lessons I have learned that I hope you take away from this presentation and Q&A session today. Working has given me choices Start early to explore how you see yourself after high school. Know yourself and become a self-advocate. Search for jobs in an, in, in an integrated setting with competitive pay. Speak, uh, seek employers who customize jobs and provide accommodations. Use your VR employment specialist network. Know all, know and use all the sports provided through your VR, provide, provided through VR or vocational rehabilitation. And be an advocate for more and better jobs. And apparently, here's a tip I would like to offer. If you're willing, check out job openings at my company and see if you are a good fit. But getting a job is not the end of the, so end of the story. We all need to, be a, need to be active. And your advocacy is needed. We need more employers actively seeking to hire people with disabilities. We need more information for job seekers about where to find employ employers looking to hire people with disabilities. We need more people, more employers to be trained in job interviewing, job etiquette, job customization, and job support teams. And we also need more employers to know of the positive financial impacts, impact of hiring workers with disabilities. So if you, you know of a person or company who is hiring, please consider, me, can, consider connecting me with them so I can share the value of it of hiring a person with a disability. And lastly, I just want to say thank you again to you all for listening to me rant on with this Q&A and listening to me. And also thank you to Sharon and fellow um, sport 
and similar art for providing this base something Q and A to allow me, to allow me talk. Thank you so much, Michael. That was extremely uh, well organized and wonderful. I have a comment and a couple of questions, and there's one question left from our audience. I hope you can stay on for just a couple more minutes while we wrap of up. Course. Um, I want to just comment, you talked about job customization, and I think that's one of those things that is becoming harder and harder to do. And I think it's so important for employers to see that what was customized for you not only was a fairly simple adaptation, but it was a win-win for their company. Because right. they broke that job into stages, it created better accuracy for everybody because there was a lot of crosswalk with it. And, and I think that's most of the time what's the case so i appreciate you bringing that out time definitely and i mean you mean it may just be a symbol a symbol of companies such as moving your office and chair like two inches or maybe raising your mind monitor um you know you say your monitors at the um, or now adjustable. We think that to a company you let your um sitting position or what have you. Th simple things like that can make a huge yeah. impact to some people. Yeah, I think the average accommodation costs fifty dollars or less, so it's not a uh, big imposition for a company. Um, there's a question in the chat about your naturalness in doing presentations. They want to know how you prepare and you overcome nerves because you just seem very uh, natural as you've gone through. Well, so to answer that, over the um, over the last two years, I've gotten more and more uh, secure, I guess, in speaking to people. Um, you know, as I mentioned in the PowerPoint, I, um, spoke at Washington, D.C. in 2022. Um, I've gone to Missouri State Housing Center, talking with them, um, and, um, go back this, this, uh, Next week, actually, to talk about talk with the talk to DC area, um, and then to do this presentation with the ARC. I had one uh a week or now two two or three weeks ago on the same topic, so I feel like I'm well versed. So in middle school and high school, I was an average stutterer, and I hope that people can see the, navigate the way people can see how that doesn't impact me. Yeah, I I, I want to come back and ask you about that and about just the your ability to overcome obstacles along the way and your frustration, but I'm going to pivot to your mom briefly because oh. I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, DB 101 you mentioned, which is our local business hub. And I think one of the things families fear is this balance of income versus access to benefits like Social Security and uh, Medicaid and other things like that. Linda, was there a point when you felt anxious about you know, how uh, full-time work could impact Michael's access to benefits. How did you educate yourself about that? You know, I think we're still educating ourselves on, because this is really a changing situation with Ticket to Work and some of the new legislation that's coming out. But really what we've been doing is just checking periodically to see if there's changes that would make the situation better for us. But when um, Michael learned about DB 101 through his recent Partners in Policymaking course that he's taking, I thought that was great because it really lays that out so clearly. Here's what happens if you start working full-time, do a little calculation, 
And yes, you may lose some of your benefits. For some people, there's a possibility that they would not have benefits at all, but the working income actually replaces and adds so much more than what they're getting in terms of benefits that it really is, it was a great way. It was just like it opened up so many, um, it opened us up to such new thinking on all that. So we were really happy to see that. Yeah, I think that's one of those myths that is fed to families that really puts them off of, of thinking big about jobs. So uh, everybody out there, you can check. We've got a DB101 webinar out there that you can go back and see all the many wonderful things on there. And there's a site at it for every state. So ours is MO uh, DB101. Um, so thank you so much, Linda. I really appreciate your comments. Uh, Michael, to wrap us up, just, you know, how, how can we help young people get past the barriers that they're going to face along the way? How do how did you manage to get through that pretty tough two-year period where you weren't finding the work that was the right one? That's that's really takes a lot of strength of character. I'm enjoying sharing it does and take a lot of strength and character and not and not only those things, but perseverance. Not only on the um person with a disability, but their um network, their family and everything, everybody that's encircling the wagons around them. I um want to go ahead and share this um one of these. Um um I know that um we had some Pre, pre some questions that I would like to address. Um, and I think I covered them, but I just want to double be sure. Yeah, I appreciate you. Go for it. Um, so, um, whenever you're looking for internships, use the pre-employment transitions through VR. And every high school student can use this. Um, know your interests, like work outdoors, what about a nursery, a garden, um, taking care of plants, um, if you're in the country, you know, what are your interests? Um, do you like to work work with people, work at a concession stand, ballpark, hospital, um, to like to be moving around, um, being active, do you like to file things of the nature? Remember, still, skills can be taught, especially soft skills. Um, lean on parents and organizations, like the St. Louis Arc to connect you with employers. Um, you know, my summer jobs were being a teacher's assistant at Ladue schools. And then in after school, um, youth program assistant at Webster's, Web, Webster Groves School District. But I mean, once again, go back to what you know, what interests you, what, what you're passionate about, all those things. I found my internships through Bonbon, and then in turn, I had two internships at St. Louis Arc, and then at, at the Center for Hearing and Speech. And the second thing I want to uh, address is the transition afterward. Did I stay in VR until I was 21? Unfortunately, I did not do enough in high school. That is why I'm presenting to you today so you can have a different path than me. Learn from history because if you don't, you're, you're doomed to, to repeat the bad mistakes. 
I worked in in the summers, which is very important. I used VR after his, after high school for assessments and driver's training. I used VR again after college. Thank you very much, Michael. I hope you all enjoyed this presentation as much as I did. I want to thank you, Michael, also for your advocacy. I think more self-advocates, uh, the more self-advocates we have that are speaking to legislators, both locally and at the state and national level, the better those resources will be for employment support. So uh, Michael took the time to present to our St. Louis self-advocate group. So if you'd like to build some of your advocacy skills, they meet every Thursday at four online. We'd love to have you uh, contact us to learn more about that. Thanks, everybody.